Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. I'm currently on a mission where I'm trying to review every single book I've read this year. We are 34 weeks into the year and I've read 51 books and reviewed like none of them. So I'm going to apologise in advance if anything I say in these reviews is either A inaccurate or B not even about that book because my brain doesn't work sometimes. I'm also going to apologise now because my neighbour next door is like drilling and I can hear it but I don't know if you can. So today we're going to be talking about The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and I haven't taken the sticker off yet so please just ignore it. And we're reviewing this book because it's probably my favourite book I've read this year so far and also it's the one book that actually broke me. So I say like, oh, a book made me cry loads of times, but really books make me tear up and this is the first book that I actually had like tears coming down my face and there are tear stains on the pages. But like, this is the book that broke me. So I got this book because reading like all Rick Riordan's books, there's none here, so I'm a bad person. But reading all his books gave me this like obsession with Greek mythology. And it's a new take on the Iliad, which I haven't read and I don't really have desire to but I still want to learn so much more about Greek mythology and Greek history and because the Iliad is written about the Trojan War which is probably arguably the most important event in Greek history learning more about that feels like a good place to start on my mission to learn everything about Greek Greek Greece so first of all we're going to talk about how this book is so like incredibly beautifully written like, it took me a while to get into it honestly because at the start there's a lot of like history and mythology and loads of facts and details about how the world is like dumped right at the start of the book but that's very essential to him the rest of the story so looking back at it now i don't mind the information dump because it got like all of that stuff out of the way so i could enjoy the rest of the book without having to learn more stuff but i almost put the book down when i started reading it the first time and then i got a few chapters in and I was just completely captivated with the story. Like, Madeline Miller has this beautifully poetic style of writing and she took legends and brought them to life in the pages. She never really goes into much details about Patroclus. Is he called Patroclus? I'm going to call him Patroclus because I don't know how else you could possibly pronounce that name. So she never really goes into detail about his and Achilles' relationship but the subtlety between them is what really made every moment they were on page just so wonderful and every moment they shared together was like kind of magical because so it's not about detail it's about the small things and I just love it. <laughs> the next thing we're going to talk about is how honest the story is. In a lot of historical fiction the whole like rough edges of ancient cultures get smoothed down and like smoothed away like slaves get treated well and women have a voice and that's understandable like in fantasy those things are like got rid of in fantasy you have like no excuse to be sexist or racist or anything like that but this is a historical fiction and this is an accurate portrayal of what it was like back in those times so the story is like full of sexism and mythology and there's rape mentioned like almost offhand because to these characters and in this time these things were common and they were expected so this is putting like facts into the fiction and although this does mean the book won't be for everyone but I appreciate the whole raw honesty of it and it just makes it more authentic and real to read. And the final point, because I'm trying to keep this short because my neighbours are annoying me and the final point is that Miller stayed true to the like, homosexuality in the Iliad and also the gayness of ancient Greek in general instead of like hiding away from it. So I know what, whatever the film's called about the Trojan War, what is it called? It's probably like some Achilles film, but that basically got rid of the gayness altogether, and that's like hiding away from what the Greece truly was, or is. It might still be. I don't really know much about Greece nowadays. The relationship is built up like through the pages, and it's also built up, built up throughout their entire lives together. And it is all delivered so beautifully that I just like fell in love with their love story and their love in general. And I feel warm and smushy on the inside. <laughs> ever since they were children, Patroclus was like enamoured by Achilles, like ever since they first met. And they never wanted to be parted from each other, even as they grew up together and they fought together and they became inseparable 
But they still had issues and they fought for and against each other. Patroclus wanted to end this war, but Achilles didn't even want to fight it because he didn't think it was like, worthy of his name. And he wanted to find a bigger war that was one worthy for him to fight in. And here's a spoiler. I mean, you probably already, like, if you were watching this video, you know anything about Greek history, you would probably know this, but spoiler. This ending, um, for like, I'm gonna try, it was like, for easily like the last a good 50 pages, I was crying constantly because I knew how the story was gonna end, I didn't want it to. And the whole thing about Achilles didn't want to fight in the war and Patroclus wanted to end it but the only way to end it was to get Achilles to fight. So Patroclus putting on Achilles' armour and going to fight it pretending to be him and then he dies because everyone thought he was Achilles. And oh my f god. This fuck. So then Achilles goes out and he fights and he gets killed as well. And then the whole thing about Achilles' son coming back and then they want to be that have the ashes together and oh I knew from the start they were going to die and it still shocked me and it upset me and I'm still upset by it but I cried for easily like the last 50 pages just solid of this book just sobbing end of spoiler <laughs> this is a story that's driven by love but it's not defined by it and it's so exceptionally beautiful and painful and magical and devastating and that's really what I had to say on that this book got five out of five stars in case you didn't guess already should we read some quotes? When I was originally scrolling through Goodreads trying to find quotes for my like, blog review, I was literally like tearing up just th even thinking about looking at quotes for this book. Because this book like owns me, I just get so emotional just thinking about it. So we're going to read some quotes. <laughs> I could recognise him by touch alone, by smell. I would know him blind, by the way his breast came and his feet struck the earth. I would know him in death, at the end of the world. Spoiler alert. In the darkness, two shadows reaching through the hopeless heavy dusk, their hands meet and light spills in a flood like a hundred golden urns pouring out of the sun. There is no law that gods must be fair, Achilles, Chiron said. And perhaps it is the greater grief, after all, to be left on earth when another is gone, do you think? He is a weapon, a killer. Do not forget it. You can use a spear as a walking stick, but that will not change its nature. I read this book nine months ago and it still owns my soul. So thank you for watching this video. If you've read this book, drop it in the comments. Or if you have like other books that are very similar to this, like you know, devastating Greek tragedies, drop that in the comments as well because I would very much love to read them. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye!